The new autofocus system from Panasonic definitely has a learning curve. I want to tell you my tips and tricks I've picked up over the last six months and tell you how one simple change will drastically improve your autofocus. I'm guessing there is one of two reasons why you're here. Gotten yourself a Panasonic Lumix S52 or S52X or you're thinking about buying one. Lumix have now added one of the best autofocus systems in the business. The way I'm going to break this down is first I'm going to quickly touch over what lenses there is and how they work. Then I'm going to go over the modes and how I set up my autofocus. Then lastly we will touch on operation and what modes to use in what scenarios. And there's an all important tip and it's something that we do on our smartphones, on the Sony cameras. So it's only normal that we start to do it on this Lumix camera. But before we go any further, I've got loads more Lumix content coming on this channel so please subscribe let's not waste any more time and let's jump straight into the camera there are two kind of lenses when it comes to autofocus for video on Lumix cameras as long as the back of the lens is just a straight L mount then it's part of the L mount alliance and it means that the autofocus will be great I have Sigma lenses and Panasonic lenses and I've not noticed any difference in autofocus speed or quality between them. The other lens to consider is an adapted lens. This is where you get something like this MC11 from Sigma. The autofocus through one of these adapters is actually really good. I would say if a native L mount lens is a 10 out of 10, then an adapted lens is around a 7 or an 8. It's almost unnoticeable in most scenarios, but it's just an odd situation where the lens is a little noisier and a little slower than the native L mount stuff. To keep this video simple, I'm gonna be focusing just on the native L mount lenses. I may do a video in the future on adapting lenses once I've got more experience with it and I've tested more EF glass coming through the adapter. But for now, let's just focus on the native L mount lenses. Looking on the back of the S5, there is a dial just here. This dial is solely dedicated to focus. As you spin the dial around, there's three different modes. There is S, what stands for single. There is C, that stands for continuous. And there is MF, what stands for manual focus. Now, when it comes to video, you will pretty much never need single. You will only ever need continuous and manual focus. If we jump into the menu by hitting the menu button, then we go to the gear icon that is the second one down and then to the AF icon that is the second one down again on the sub menu. And the setting we need in here is show slash hide AF mode. Now this list here is the full list of all the autofocus modes in this camera. Some are not available when it comes to video, but what this menu allows you to do is turn on and off the ones you don't use to simplify the menu. But for this video, I'm going to just leave them all on. In the middle of our focus dial on the back of the S5 body again, you will see there is a button you hit this button it brings up your autofocus modes now let's quickly go through what these are as you can see before there are two that are grayed out i'm not sure why this is but two whenever you're in any video modes are just unavailable starting from the right hand side we have one area and one area plus it will try and focus on whatever is inside the box using the wheel on the front of your camera you can change the size of this box as you can see that's the largest it's the smallest. I find that with this box, if you ever make it too small on the smallest setting, it's not very good. As you can see here, you see it's like it's struggling. It's not really, it's got it eventually, but if you watch, if I do the same movement with a box, just a little bit larger, you'll see a total speed difference. So my advice here is keep the box a reasonable size. So jumping across to one area plus, it is the exact same again, but this time, as you can see, there is a there is a brackets around the box. Now this is really good for if it's a moving subject as it tries to latch on to what's in the box. But as you will see here, as that leaves the frame, it just hangs on. Again, my advice here is I always tend to use one area plus. I just find it the more reliable. Next one along, we have zone. Again, this works quite similar to the uh, one area plus, but it's more of an oval shape. You can change the size to make it a circle. You don't have much room on here. That's basically all you can do. But again, if you have, if you just want this kind of shape, you will get similar results. From a smaller, there you go. Moving on to the next box, we have full area autofocus. Now this is exactly as it sounds. The camera will just read the full frame. Now I did hear Panasonic say it was even a video or, or reading the manual. 
that it will favor the closest object to the lens. If we move the right lens closer, it then chooses to do that. If we move it back and move the other one for, for closer, it then chooses to do that. So as you can see, this kind of favors the closest thing to the camera, but it reads the full frame. There is no boxing or excluding areas. Now the last mode is tracking. Now this is, a, again, this is pretty self-explanatory. So for tracking, if I tap this lens, this is my least favorite mode. As you can see, I just feel it always does a pretty bad job in this mode. Even if we give it something like the lens here, and then move that across and back. It can work. I've used it with some pretty decent results. It's much more repeatable using the one area plus mode. Uh, but if you need to track something and that's going to work for the scenario they are shooting, it's definitely an option and you can definitely get some great results. While you're anywhere on your autofocus menu, if you just press the up arrow, you will see that it goes to human detection. Now this basically enables the detection mode. If I press display, you can see in here we have human, face and eye and animal plus human. Never use face and eye for the sake of just keeping this video simple. This is probably for me the most important setting on what can really make or break the autofocus in this camera. In a moment, I'm gonna run through some scenarios and what modes I'd use and stuff will become a little clearer then. There is one more setting that is important when it comes to autofocus in video and that is under the camera tab and then under the focus box. Under here, you wanna go to AF custom setting video click make sure it's turned on and then press set under here you can see for this video i have had both speeds turned up to max there is no right or wrong answer in here but the best way to think about af speed would be the speed that your hand turns the focus ring on the lens so the higher this number the faster your hand is turning the lens ring and the faster something will travel from one focus point to another now sensitivity in manual terms would be the choice you are making one side says responsive and the other side says locked on. So that pretty much explains to you what this does. If you press display, you can have more information. Read through that, that can help. Uh, I tend to move these. I would say my general settings I stick around are around maybe plus two on speed and plus one on sensitivity. So let's jump into operation. The one major tip I have for this camera, what I spoke about in the intro of this video, most of the time, tapping does work, as you can see here in this simple scenario. Now, my biggest tip for this camera is drag. Do not tap, so grab the focus point with your finger and drag. As you can see here, it's much more responsive. It's almost like you're much more in control of the camera. It's just not as responsive. See, see the little second it took there? Tap, and then you wait a second and it focuses. Tap, you wait a second and it focuses. If you grab and you pull, it's just much more responsive. It makes this camera so much more usable, just dragging the box rather than tapping and waiting for that little, for the camera to think about itself. Now we know how to use the camera and what all the settings mean. Let's run through some scenarios in which modes I would use on different projects for interviews or content creation. The mode I would have it in is the one I have it in right now, which is human detection. So it gets my eyeball right in focus and I would have it in full. I would just let the camera decide there's only one face for it to find and lock onto. So it should have no trouble. This is really like 101 for any camera with usable autofocus. The next scenario would be a shot where you're at an event or a wedding or just some scenario where there is multiple people in the frame and say you will need to focus on just one of them people. This is where I think Panasonic so autofocus system is at its weakest compared to say Sony's as it just really flickers and does not decide who it wants. So then the go-to fix for this you would think is to jump into one area plus so you could put the box just around the person. While this does work and that is the concept behind this, I still find it can kind of have a mind of its own and flick to a person. So my fix for this, as crazy as it sounds, is turn off human detection. I just run one area plus. I place that box on someone's face and it just locks on. It does a really good job, unless you're at an extremely shallow depth of field where you really need the eye in focus. For most case scenarios, you will be fine just with the one area plus human detection off, 
place the box over the person's face you want in focus and your footage will be just fine. Next scenario is pulling focus from one thing to another using autofocus. Then one area plus is going to work great. Just remember, do not tap, drag, and you will have so much of a better result. A little bit more complicated if his face is in, because again, he struggles to make its mind up whether it wants, say, the person on the left or the person on the right. Unless at a really shallow depth of field, like full frame 1.4, I would definitely turn off human detection and just put one area or one area plus zone over someone's face then drag that over to the other face you want in focus. And if you've got the sensitivity and AF speed set right in the camera, you will get pretty natural looking perfect focus pull. Just a general shot, if you're on like a gimbal or a tripod doing a wide establishing shot, maybe it's an opener or you're doing some sort of property stuff. For this, I'm going in full human detection off and the camera will pretty much just get, it will push close to infinity or wherever it needs to be. And if it was on a gimbal doing a tracking shot, say it was like a dolly move or an interview that's walking, I would, again, one area plus, if it's one person, human detection. If it's multiple people, I would try one area plus without human detection and just have the area over the person's face and you'll be absolutely fine. The last scenario I can think of is tracking an object that might be moving around in frame, or like a car that's driving around. This is the Panasonic's weakest point for me. You would need to be in tracking mode, you would hit it, and it would do a relatively good job, but just go into tracking, hit it, make sure you roll it as much as possible to get as much usable footage as possible, or drop to manual focus. So let's pretend I didn't just deliver this whole outro and forgot to press record. If you are filming in different types of projects or scenarios that I did not mention in this video, let me know below. I'd love to give my advice or try and help you out what mode I think might work best for that. Before you jump on that paid shoot for a client or you shoot that wedding or event or something really important, please just take time to put your camera in manual focus, practice your manual focus, get really good, learn the focus speaking, learn the focus assist, the picture in picture, and then when that time comes that the autofocus does fail on you, or you do need to fall back onto manual focus, you'll be amazing at it, and the shoot will go as smooth as possible. If you wanna know what the best lenses are for your S5 II and S5 IIx, click here.